six unbeaten NFL teams, but will any team finish the season 16 and 0? According to FBI season simulations, there's a 2.3 percent chance that at least one team finishes 16 and 0, and the Falcons are the most likely to accomplish that feat with a 1 percent chance, just barely ahead of the Patriots. Stephen A. Smith, are the Falcons over or underrated? Well, they're overrated if you're talking about them going 16 and 0 because I think that's just ridiculous. I don't think a team that's ranked that ranks thir you know one of the worst pass defenses in the game of football. I think they're ranked 30th is going to be able to deliver the goods for you in terms of an undefeated season. But this was my pick to win the NFC South, and I stand by it. Although I am pleasantly surprised by what I'm seeing in Carolina, particularly with my man Cam Newton. I'm very proud of him. But I look at the Atlanta Falcons right now. They are 4-0 on this season. Yeah, they're not getting to the quarterback. They've only got five sacks on the season skip, Coach Herm. Um, I get all of that, but they're going after the ball. They're more physical than they've looked in years on the defensive side of the ball. I'm just looking at some of the things that are taking place in that, in, that, in, in that particular category, and I like what I am seeing from them. They defend well against the run, not necessarily so much against the pass. And then I'm just looking at some of these guys right here, the Justin Durant's of the world leading the team in tackles, the way their secondary has been playing, even though, they're, again, they're soft in the passing game. They just need to get after the quarterback and stop giving quarterbacks so much time to pass. Offensively is the reason I picked them to win this division. I look at a Matt Ryan. I don't think that he's uh, Peyton Manning or a Big Ben or Aaron Rodgers, but look, he's pretty damn good. And then you got Julio Jones, who is arguably the best receiver in all of football. Clearly top two as far as I'm concerned. You look at this guy, Leonard Hankerson. He's second on the team with 17 receptions. They're doing this despite the fact that Roddy White only has six receptions in four games, Skip. I don't know what's the matter with him. If he's still, if he's injured, forgive me for saying it, uh, but he looks right now like he's almost done. Unless he shows, unless he shows up and help these brothers out, he might need to start coaching or coming to white, coming to be do color commentary or something here. You know, because he ain't playing. You got six receptions in four games. Something is wrong with that picture. If you're Roddy White, that's not the Roddy White we know and love. And I sincerely hope that he gets it together and they get him more involved, or he can gain separation for receivers. Do something, because Julio Jones and Hankerson are holding it down and. So Skip, coach, let me say right now, I'm going to put my hand up. Uh oh Maybe, maybe uh -oh. primetime Deion Sanders or somebody has an edge on me in this category. Maybe our very own Chris Carter has the edge on me because he knows this kid personally. The kid is the, you know, I think he's the oldest of 10 kids. Look, this kid, Devontae, Devontae Adams, let me, Devontae Freeman, this kid, I love him. I love mm. him. I love what I see. He runs so hard. He goes after it. He's averaging nearly four yards a carry, okay? He's got about 17 receptions himself on the season. I am a fan of Devontae Freeman. This brother can ball. I love his game. I love how he goes after it. He's a fourth-round pick. I don't know why that was. Keep in mind, Skip Bayless, and I'll give credit to Chris Carter for educating me about this. I, he reminded me about this rather. This guy didn't get that much activity at Florida State. So this is a fresh young body in the NFL. What I'm seeing from this kid, if this kid continues to play the way that he's playing and their defense could learn how to get some sacks or defend the pass better, Atlanta can be a force to be reckoned with. 16-0, no way. Can I see a 12 and 4 possibility? Yes, I can. Yeah, Fire Stephen Day's made a lot of great points, and he's touched upon it. And, and it starts with the head coach, Coach Quinn, and, and met him uh, at the owners' meeting. And uh, you know, his mind said he wants to build an image like he had in Seattle. Well, Stephen, how, how did he strike you? Well, the first, yeah, battle? just you know, he, he's good with the players. You could just tell he's going to be good with the players. We had a nice conversation, and um, he's about building the same kind of mindset they had in Seattle, especially defensively as well as offensively. Now he's got a runner. He reminds me a lot of Lynch, can break, can break the first arm tackle, run. He's already got seven touchdowns. He's built low to the ground. He is. Strong-legged guy, can catch the ball out of the backfield. They've got a talented receiver and, and really have 
they have a quarterback that's a top 10 quarterback in this league. I mean, and, and when you think about Matt Ryan, what he's done, no offensive line per se, and he's finding a way to get the ball to, to Julio Jones and, and to Hankerson and Roddy White has heard, as he said. Defensively, they're just playing hard. They're just playing flat hard like they did yeah. in Seattle. They're taking the ball away, which gives them an opportunity yeah. to get off the football field. But they don't get to the quarterback much. But, but, but they just play hard. And, and when you turn the film on, you go, wow. Look how many guys run to the ball and tackle. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you watch the film, you're the opponent watching that. You're going, hey, boys, we better get ready for this now. You know, and because you look at the numbers, they're not a top 10 defense. But they play angry. They play together. And that's what's great about when you watch them play. And I think yep. right now they got a quarterback, whether he's at home or on the road, in the fourth quarter, if he has the ball, he can win the game. He can flat win the game. The game's not too big for Matt Ryan. You're on the road or at home. In the fourth quarter, and that's what you want. You want a quarterback um, that has potential of saying, we need a score, he can do it. But he does have a big stud receiver oh, that he completely yeah. trusts yeah. under any pressure situation. No doubt. I'll just throw it in that direction, and that guy's going to snatch it smart. and run with that's it. That's a smart okay? decision. Well, I, I get that. So let me start by giving props to my man Stephen A. Smith because he did say before this season started he liked this Atlanta team. I don't know if he liked them quite as much as as, as they played at the level they played, but he did I, like I them think to win the division. Now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So now let's get back to overrated, underrated. If I just take this Falcons team in a vacuum and just put them by themselves um, and, and say how good a football team this is, it's overrated. But if I take it, given its schedule, I think people are sleeping on these Falcons because this schedule, by NFL standards of schedules, is is a cakewalk. Cake are yeah. you saying they're gonna go 16 and 0? Here, here's what they're gonna do: they're gonna go 14 and 2, oh, okay. or maybe 15 and 1. I, I give them an outside shot at 16 and 0, just because. It looks to my eye, knowing what I know to this point, the quarter way through the season, it looks pretty easy given the fact they've got Carolina at the end of the year home and away with one week in between them. So that one game is, you know, the one game at Carolina is it's tough. It's uh, Real December tough. 13th. Real tough. Okay, that's going to be a tough one. So if we're talking about 16 and 0, that would be the one you'd have to win for sure. Then they turn around two weeks later, December 27th, and get them back in Atlanta. Those are the two hardest games to my eye left on the schedule. Now, Stephen A. thought also that the Indianapolis Colts were going to get to the Super Bowl. They have the Colts in Atlanta. Are the Colts going to turn back into that Super Bowl contender? I don't think so. Look but, like it. Okay, so, look like so it. we can dismiss that game. Mm -hmm. All right, here's why I say they're overrated. And look, Dan Quinn, to your point, he may turn into the next star coach in this league because I look back at what he did, he was two years the coordinator in yes, Seattle. Seattle. Both years they went to the Super Bowl. That's right. They won one and they very easily could have won the second one, right? Okay. And now he's 4 0 as a first time head coach in the National Football League. Oh, that's pretty great. But that defense you talked about playing so hard in the second half of the Monday night opener against Philadelphia in Atlanta, yes. the Eagles offense we have all ripped to shreds went crazy on the Atlanta defense in Atlanta and went for 274 total yards and scored three touchdowns and missed a field goal with a couple of minutes left that could have put Philly ahead in that game and maybe won the game for them. Am I right? No, you're right. And, and, this okay. is, and, and, and I mentioned it, and Stephen A. mentioned it. Yep. You know, their numbers on defense are not good. I mean, okay. They will give up plays on defense. And in the first half against Brandon Whedon in his first start for the Cowboys, my, my Cowboys go for 295 yards in the first half alone and score 28 points and have a 28-14 to 14 lead and rush the ball for 131 yards against the defense. It's pretty good against the run. We, we ran wild on them in that game, and in the second half, they shut us off cold. They turned that faucet off and, and tightened it because we went backwards. I think we had a minus four yards rushing in the second half. So it's playing hard. It's making halftime adjustments by a, a coordinator and Dan Quinn who really knows what he's doing. But I can show you two halves that say they're overrated until I look at the schedule and I say, well, who's going to beat this team? This team is is on path, on track, to wind up with two home playoff games to get to the Super Bowl. Am I right about that? Well, we we'll just pump our brakes. You know, I've been in this league long enough and watched it long enough. It's not who you play, it's how you play the day you play. Okay. And so we can look at the schedule. You can start looking at that schedule and say they should beat these guys, that guy. We looked at schedules in the beginning of the season. 
certain teams we said, oh, this team at this point should be. And we look at it now, we're going, what happened to that team, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, we can sit here and say that. that that's nice shop talk. But you got to go play. Okay. okay, you gotta go it play these games. Don't let though. the, the, the okay. paper have the, the paper. Don't play a game. All right, but the players but, do. Will we will we do that kind of shop talk on yeah, this show? Yeah. You have to stand behind it for well, the rest well, of the year. Yeah, well, well I, I'm no, just hey, saying. I'm with Stephen A. I, well, I thought the Colts. I, I thought it was gonna be Colts and the Green Bay Packers. Okay, okay. Right. Well, so hey right guys, now, Colts ain't playing very well. No, I would say <laughs> one thing that I would the one thing that I would tell you what I would, I was helped along about the Atlanta Falcons because um, obviously, as you both know, I spoke to Cam Chancellor on several occasions. Mm. Uh, during the during this holdout uh, with the Seattle Seahawks, and one of the things that he did was rave, absolutely rave about Dan Quinn yeah. and the kind mm -hmm. of and the kind of man he is as yep. a coach. Yep. And he talked and he talked about how this defense. He said, "Don't pay attention to the to the statistics. Watch how his players on defense go after people." Mm -hmm. yep. He said it's going to be a different culture in a different day than what you've been seeing in Atlanta because Dan Quinn is that kind of coach and he's that kind of man. He's the kind of man that guys go out there and play for. Cam Chancellor told me that before the season started, okay. which is one of the reasons I had so much confidence I, in Atlanta. I, am, I get you and I'm with you. Last quick point about Devontae Freeman sort of falling out of the heavens mm -hmm. into their lap. Remember, the first two games that they could have lost. Against the Eagles, he goes for 18 yards on 10 carries, and then at the Giants, another game that they were down 10 yeah. early in, in the, the fourth, fourth quarter, quarter, right? Yeah. He goes for 25 yards on 12 carries, and nobody was talking about Devontae Freeman until my Cowboys introduced him to the world <laughs> by saying, watch this, he looked like Earl Campbell to me, right? He's just running roughshod over him. Well, he's, saying, a, he's, a, he's a rookie, young yeah. player, mm -hmm. and it this takes time. Sec second year. Second, excuse me, yeah, second yeah, yeah. year. He's, so he's, he's, a, he's a, a virtual rookie. He's a rookie to me. I, I, I mean, he, it's, he, you know, is, he hasn't I played agree. a lot of football. So You're right. No longer under the radar. But, but to your point, Dan Quinn has certainly changed the culture there. When you describe them playing angry, playing tough, he wouldn't describe this team that way prior to his arrival. It's really yeah. been impressive and fun to watch. So Matt Ryan versus Kirk Cousins that Sunday in Atlanta. So Skip believes it will be remembered as the bat out of hell play. <laughs> Herm Edwards is sticking around to react to that play and how the Lions handled it. We're going to get into that after the break. Stay here.